I want to start out week 27 of a study in 1 Corinthians by saying thank you to every person that's ever sown into this ministry. You know, we we started this podcast in March of 2018. And this this ministry has just grown into something I had no idea. I told a guy the other day, I said, I had no idea what God was going to do when he told me to do his podcast. He, The Lord spoke to my heart years ago and told me, he said, record everything that you do. Record everything that you do. Do this podcast. And when you go out to churches and minister in churches, you make sure you keep a recording of it and use it on that podcast. And I've done that. I've been faithful in doing that. As as long as they'll let me record the prisons and the jail, I hadn't got to where I can record in there, but ever everywhere else and, and on this podcast and churches, ministries, I, I did get to record in a youth uh, uh, detention center down in Dalton one time. But the Lord, they, the Lord just just uh, emphasized record this, and now four if almost five years later. I know why he wanted me to do all that, because the all these podcasts are going out into prisons and 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 jails all over this all over this nation. There's doors opening. The state of Tennessee, they've okayed us to send out our stuff to the Tennessee state prisons. I got an email the other day uh, for the the uh, regional or the state director for religious services. He sent an email to every prison in the state of Tennessee and said, this, this, this man's ministry is available to you. You can download it and you can contact him and he will send it to you. That thrills me. I had emails just pop up just as soon as he sent it because people read it and said, there's content that we can put out here for these inmates to grow in, to, to be strong in. And, oh, it thrills me to be able to do that. I send every one of these Thursday night uh, meetings to the prisons that are, that the doors are open. I've already uploaded the In Him Scripture study and all these other uh, uh, videos that we've done. I've I've uploaded them to uh, one company that has 77 different facilities, and another company that we've are they've are the, the one that has 77 different facilities they've already said well, we're going to have them ready and, and ready to go online in about uh, 2 weeks about so by the time you you're listening to this recording that that will already have been done and over with but we're waiting on approval for 800 facilities for another company and it just it just thrills me to be able to know that this podcast is going out all over this world. Do you know there's six thousand two hundred ninety six different jails and prisons in the U.S. in the United States of America? And that's not counting military prisons or any kind of commitment centers that somebody has been committed there through the courts. So I mean, I'm telling you, there's a lot of open doors out here, but we've got to we've got to find a way to do it. And I want to thank all the partners that are helping us do that help sowing into this ministry to help us find the way to get through all this all this stuff that we have to go through to get these podcasts to these prisoners through these prisoners cuz I'm going to say I'm going to tell you something when these prisoners start finding out who they are they're going to help others to find out who they are they're going to help their families to find out who who they are in Jesus Christ their lord and savior so I'm going to say again thank you partners for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge all over this planet, teaching people who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Glory to God. Today I want to bring you my prayers, my prayers for every person that walks face this planet. You know, Paul done these prayers for the Ephesians in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3. But my desire, I've adopted these prayers for the world so that the world could come to understand and see just how much God loves them, just how much he's for them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. 
I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down in, into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power, at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he shows me that love more and more every day of my life, and he does it through his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you. And I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Lord, touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the blessing. Lord, the the vessel that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're still going to be this week in 1 Corinthians, and, and I want to invite you, if, if you've just getting started listening to this podcast, go back. Go back to June the 21st of 2021 and find out what this, what this podcast has, has developed into, and that is a, a, a place that you can find out who God has made you to be through the salvation that he has given you, through your faith in Jesus Christ and what Jesus done so that you could walk free, and walk free of all the junk that this world throws at us. Listen to me. Listen to me today. Go back to June 21st, 2021 and get in that in him scripture study with us and then go through the study in Romans and then go through this study in 1 Corinthians Catch up. Oh, you just wouldn't believe the strength that you you can draw from God's Word. Not from me, but from God's Word. 1 Corinthians 15.58 in the, uh, the King James Version, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let me read that in the New Lemon Translation. It says, So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Oh, my goodness. If that's not something that will that will crank your tractor today. <laughs> I've, I hadn't heard that in years. My my uh, father-in-law used to say that, but it's something that'll really get you going if you'll un- come to understand that your labor in God's kingdom, that your labor 
Doing what God has called you to do in this world is not in vain. It's not nothing that you could do for God. It will ever, ever be in vain. It'll help someone. Don't get discouraged. Listen to, listen to what the Amplified Classic says. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of our Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile. It is never wasted or to no purpose. I'm going to proclaim to you today, your labor is not in vain. Whatever God has told you to do in this world, it is not in vain. I was talking to a group of people last night, and uh, I'm, I'm going to say this. hadn't said this in a long time on this podcast, but we were talking about God's Word and, and what God's Word will, will grow into if, you, if you'll allow it to. I told them, I said, listen, I said, I said anyone can take, the, take an apple and cut it, cut it open and count the seeds in it. Anyone that can count can count the seeds in an apple. But it takes a person of faith to look at a seed and count the apples in that seed. You say, well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the Word of God being planted. What the, I, I look at what God has called me to do for the last five years of my life. And for a lot, a lot of times, I look and say, "What am I? What is? What is this all about? What does what do you want me to do with this?" Because you know what, I've got this. This thing's going on uh, right now at the at the time of this recording. It's it's like seventy nine thousand times it's been uh, downloaded, and that's not a a whole lot when you look at the grand scheme of things. But just just a few months ago, God God open start open doors for us to go into these prisons, and I'm like, my goodness, my goodness, how I now I see what God was wanting all this all these recordings done for, because He's opened a door for them to be used. My labor wasn't in vain. Your labor in the kingdom of God is not in vain. If God has called you to preach, preach with all your heart, all your soul to everybody that you can that you can uh that you can get stand still long enough to listen to you. But if you're not called to preach, you're you're called to to be the greeter at church. Do it to the best of your ability because I promise you, you're planting seed today that will sprout one of these days in that person's life and, and it will change their life if you're doing it for God. God wants God wants you to know something. Your labor in where what you're doing, your labor. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this, partners of this ministry. Your labor in what you're doing to help further this ministry is not in vain because your your contributions, your prayers, what you do to further this ministry is is, go, is, is being done unto the Lord. And what you are doing, God will. God will. He don't he might not he he he's not might be he will bless your efforts. Your labor is not in vain. The seeds you're planting today will flourish in somebody's life tomorrow or the next day or even today. See, we've got to we've got to understand what how powerful God's word is. Like I said, it takes a person of faith to see the apples in a seed, to count the apples in a seed. I told them last night, I said, look, I said, there's a thousand acre orchard in one seed. If you've got enough patience and enough faith to believe it. Now, now that's a, that's a big statement, but it's a truth. You can take one seed of an apple and, and nourish it and water it, take care of it, put it in good soil, plant it, and I promise you, it'll come up and grow an apple tree. And on that apple tree, they'll be, they'll be in that lifetime of that, that apple tree, there'll be thousands of apples grown on that tree. 
and you can take the seeds out of those out of those apples and plant them around it. And before you know it, before you know it, there'll be there'll be a thousand acres of apples, apple trees, and 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 something that's growing and producing to feed people, to help people. And that's what this what that has that is what this uh what this ministry has turned into. It's turned into a place that people can get fed, can get fed. I stood over here behind a, a friend of mine's place of business a year ago, two years ago. I probably know it's probably more longer than that. I don't remember how long it's been, but anyway, we we were discussing what what I was doing in the jail. And at that time, I had no idea what was about to take place. But years later, I mean, the Lord has start, got started opening doors. And there's people getting it. There's people coming out of that jail over there and taking this 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 uh, study that I have just so, I mean, just, I mean, so vibrantly and, and just so urgently you know, stuffed in them every time I see them. You know, you just keep feeding them, feeding them with it. They're taking this same study and and starting study groups in that jail over there that are that are going on seven days a week, just not the days that I'm in there. They they study every week. There's people leaving those jails and going into prisons out here all over this nation and taking the the truths that have been taught to them and and. Watching them, watching them start Bible studies and start seeing people born into the family of God, start seeing the Christian people that are incarcerated in this country grow and who they are in Christ Jesus. It's amazing what what you hear from people. It's amazing what you what you can really get hold of and and stand in and see things happen in people's lives. It's amazing what God will do with a seed. It's amazing what God will do with a seed. God wants to bless you. He wants to help you. He wants to strengthen you. And it'll always come from his word. My labor is not in vain and neither is yours. What you do for you, for the Lord in this life, it will it will be you somewhere in, in this in this world today, allow God to use you. I'm gonna read that one more time. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Paul wanted the people of Corinth to understand that they could labor towards something that was going to matter one of these days. It's going to matter in a lot of people's lives. Oh, I thank God that he's using me to do that, to do the same thing, to get out here and work toward the common goal, and that is sowing the Word of God into people's lives to watch it grow, to watch it flourish in some people's lives. Oh, I thank God that we can all be used that way. Now, I've got a question for you today. My, and that question is, are you born again? You know, we have been promised, we have been promised salvation if we will just accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I said this last night, and I've said it all, I mean, a lot of times, probably thousands of times over the years. But there's there's millions of people in this world that believe in God I'm not asking you if you believe in God. I'm asking you, have you ever invited Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life to save you, to be your Lord and Savior? Romans 10 and 9 says, If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. Have you done that? Have you ever invited Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life and confessed him as Lord, have you? If you hadn't, today's the perfect day to do it. I want to invite you to do that. I want to invite you to come unto Jesus. Come unto him. Don't come unto me. 
but come unto Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and make him Lord today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. I thank God for his word. Now, I want want to encourage you. Go to our website and get in touch with us. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do. If, If you're just now getting born again, I want to encourage you to go back to June 21st of 2021 and find out what God says about his born again children. Go through that study and find out what God says. Oh, I thank God for the truths that he's teaching. There's a, a phone app on there that you can get this phone. This podcast comes straight to your phone every day of the week, six days a week. I take off on Saturdays, but six days a week, this podcast goes out. And I want you to know it's there for a reason. It's free to you. It's there to feed you. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigal son Dot com. Now, one more thing. I want to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. I praise God today for faithful partners like you. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.